I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. In the Dominion $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit against Fox and several of its executives and reporters filed in the Delaware Superior Court, a major filing has just been unsealed. This is the summary judgment that has been filed by Dominion against Fox seeking for the judge to essentially rule in favor of Dominion against Fox, leaving the only remaining issue for a jury to decide would be the damages if the court would grant this motion. But in this motion, we see explosive text messages that were sent by Fox's top reporters, executives, all the way to the top with Rupert Murdoch of essentially all of the reporters recognizing that Donald Trump and all of those people in Trump's inner circle like Giuliani and Eastman and Sidney Powell, that they were all lying and not just lying, but were spreading vile and heinous conspiracy theories. Look, I'll go over it in one second, but the motion basically starts off by saying Fox knew their reporters knew not only did their reporters knew, but their reporters were all their executives were all talking about how these uh, Trump conspiracy theorists were just spreading disinformation and that these were crazy, disgusting people. Yet Fox made the decision they were going to platform all of these people's for ratings because they thought without it, their business would be harmed. And these text messages that are in this motion are explosive. So we got to take some time together to go over these messages. I want to go over with you this entire motion because there are hundreds and hundreds of text messages that are referenced in this motion, each more explosive than the next. And it is so poor important that you know about all of these text messages, not cherry picking the text messages. So bear with me. Look, if you want to forward this video and cherry pick on your own, go for it. I'm not going to cherry pick. I want to go through every one of the text messages that Dominion mentions in this motion for summary judgment that it filed against Fox and its reporters for the court to reach a judicial determination that this case doesn't even need to go to a jury on liability, but that it should just be decided in Dominion's favor and the case should just go to damages. That is what Dominion is asking for. We'll see what the court does regardless this case is going to trial in April. So let's start off with the introduction. Tucker Carlson to his producer, Alex Pfeiffer, quote, Sidney Powell is lying, November 16th, 2020. Here is a message from Laura Ingraham to Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity, November 15th, 2020. Sidney Powell is a bit nuts. Sorry, but she is. Here is a message from Rupert Murdoch, November 19th, 2020. Really crazy stuff. Here's a message from Mead Cooper, Fox News Executive Vice President for Prime Time Programming. Question, do you believe as of November 6th that going on television to say that the election is being stolen would be a conspiracy theory? Answer, I agree that would not be based in fact at that point. That was actually in a defamation. This is from Susan Scott, Fox News CEO. Question, you believe since at least the time that Fox News called the election on November 7th that Joe Biden was legitimately elected the president of the United States, correct? Answer from the CEO of Fox, Suzanne Scott. Yes, I believe that. This is Steve Bannon to Maria Bartiroma, November 10th, 2020. 71 million voters will never accept Biden. This process is to destroy his presidency before it even starts. If it even starts, we either close on Trump's victories or delegitimize Biden. The plan. That was from Steve Bannon to Maria Bartiroma, November 10th of 2020. This is from December 1, 2020. Fox reporter Lucas Tomlinson to Brett Baer, Fox's chief political correspondent. It's dangerously insane 
these conspiracy theories. This is Stephen Richer, Republican County Recorder in Maricopa County, Arizona. The whole theory is absolutely ludicrous to anyone who bothers researching elections for more than five minutes or speaking with any elections professionals. This is from uh, Fox's internal fact checks regarding Dominion's allegations, November 13 and November 20 of 2020. Incorrect and not evidence of widespread fraud. This is uh, Sean Hannity from his deposition. The whole narrative that Sydney was pushing, I did not believe it for one second. Sean Hannity. This is from Fox Politics editor Chris Steyerwalt on whether the allegation that Dominion rigged the election was true. This is what he said at his deposition. No reasonable person would have thought that. And this is what Dominion then writes in its brief. Fox knew from the top down, Fox knew, quote, the Dominion stuff was, quote, total BS. Yet despite knowing the truth or at a minimum recklessly disregarding that truth, Fox spread and endorse these outlandish voter fraud claims, quote, about Dominion, even as it internally recognized the lies as, quote, crazy, quote, absurd, and, quote, shockingly reckless. The colorful choices of words used by so many Fox employees all try to capture the same basic truth about these inherently improbable allegations. The claims were false, And obviously so. A mountain of direct evidence demonstrates actual malice without reserve to motive or other circumstantial factors. But why did Fox peddle this false narrative to its viewers? Fox's correct call of Arizona for Joe Biden triggered a backlash among its audience and the, quote, network was being rejected. Rival networks such as Newsmax took advantage of the opening by promoting, quote, an alternative universe of election fraud. So Fox went on, quote, war footing, caring far more about protecting its own failing viewership than about the truth. In the words of Fox News' senior vice president and managing editor of the Washington, D.C. Bureau, Bill Salmon, quote, it's remarkable how weak ratings make good journalists do bad things, end quote. The consequences to dominion and to democracy did not matter, did not matter. We'll go on to talk about more of the facts right now. So here are some of the other facts that goes. Each circumstantial factor cut strongly in Dominion's favor, but here the words of multiple Fox employees provide overwhelming direct evidence of actual malice. In addition to the evidence cited above, the excerpts below feature just some of additional examples showing Fox employees knew at the time that these claims and the guests that were promoting them were, so what Tucker Carlson said on November 20th of 2020, Ludicrous. This is what Tucker Carlson said on December 24th of 2020. Totally off the rails. This is what Sean Hannity said in December 22nd, 2020. Fucking lunatics. This is what Dana Perino said on November 16th, 2020. Nuts. This is what producer, Fox producer John Fawcett said to Lou Dobbs on November 7th, 2020. Complete bullshit. This is what Maria Bartiroma said regarding the email she received from Sidney Powell. Kooky. This is what Raj Shah, Fox Corporation's senior vice president, said on November 21, 2020 about Trump's claims. Mind-blowingly nuts. By the time Fox called the election on November 7th, numerous Fox employees knew that Joe Biden had legitimately prevailed. As Fox chief political correspondent Brett Baer stated on November 5th, there is no evidence of fraud. There is no evidence of fraud. 
Indeed, multiple Fox witnesses called the allegation and the people making and repeating them, such as Sidney Powell and Janine Pirro, quote, reckless at the time. As Tucker Carlson told Sidney Powell on November 17th, quote, you keep telling our viewers that millions of votes were changed by the software. I hope you will prove that very soon. You've convinced them that Trump will win. If you don't have conclusive evidence of fraud at that scale, it's a cruel and reckless thing to keep on saying. Carlson then texted, quote, and this part's redacted, but he texted someone that it was, quote, shockingly reckless to claim Dominion rigged the election if there's no one inside the company willing to talk or internal Dominion documents or copies of the software showing that they did. And as you know, there absolutely isn't. You go down and we will find more of the uh, messages here that I think are completely damning. You go to the factual background section on page 14, um, and this is Maria Bartiroma with Powell. Sydney, we talked about the Dominion software. I know that there were voting irregularities. Tell me about this. this is what they said on air. Sydney Powell, that's putting it mildly. The computer glitches could not and should not have happened at all. That is where the fraud took place, where they were flipping votes in the computer system or adding votes that did not exist. When Maria Bartiroma interviewed Sidney Powell on November 8, 2020, Fox placed Dominion at the center of a wide-ranging and inherently implausible conspiracy theory designed to perpetuate the myth that Donald Trump and not Joe Biden legitimately won the 2020 presidential election. As Rupert Murdoch and Suzanne Scott, the CEO of Fox, recognized on November 6, 2020, it was, quote, very hard to credibly cry foul everywhere with Trump losing multiple swing states. Conveniently for conspiracy theorists, however, Dominion operated in many, but not all of the jurisdictions, and Dominion then became uh, attached to it based on Fox's defamatory uh, conduct. Oh, hey, when did you get here? Let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Henson Shaving. Look, everyone knows how annoying cheap razors are. The cuts, the irritation, the frustration. And don't get me started with subscription razor services. The headaches that those can cause. That's why you got to meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the ISS. That's the International Space Station and Mars Rover, and now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades, they're like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble, the more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave, it, it isn't a blade problem. It's an extension problem. By using aerospace grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration free shave. It gets better. The razor has built in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no obsolescence. The Henson Razor, it works with standard dual edge blades to give you that old school shave with the benefit of new school tech. Once you own the Henson Razor, it's only about $3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. My first shave with the Henson Razor was incredibly refreshing. The design is sleek and the durability is top notch. The Henson Razor is truly much better than your run of the mill quote unquote traditional razor brand. And the affordability factor is absolutely game changing. No more wasting your money on expensive blades. With Henson shaving, you get a year of blades for just $5. Okay, so here's what you have to do. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash Midas to pick the razor for you and use code Midas and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash Midas and use code Midas. And now back to the video. 
they go on and talk about Fox's election day coverage uh, and backlash after they called uh, Arizona. And this is what it says on page 19. Fox host Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingraham, and Sean Hannity immediately understood the threat and backlash to them personally after Fox called the election for Biden in Arizona. Carlson wrote his producer, Alex Pfeiffer, on November 5th. We worked really hard to build what we have. Those fuckers are destroying our credibility. It enrages me. He added that he had spoken with Laura and Sean a minute ago, and they are highly upset. Carlson noted, quote, at this point, we're getting hurt no matter what. Pfeiffer responded, quote, it's hard. It's a hard needle to thread, but I really think many on our side are being reckless demagogues right now. Tucker replied, of course they are. We're not going to follow them. And he added, what Trump's good at is destroying things. He's the undisputed world champion of that. He could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. Hannity faced a similar dilemma. On November 5th, Hannity told his audience that, quote, it will be impossible to ever know the true, fair, accurate election results. That's a fact. Producer Robert Samuel told the team, quote, my two cents got to be super careful on any allegation since people can say, quote, you're pushing that American democratic system can't be trusted. Just have to be 1000 percent sure and very careful. The next section is election fraud conspiracy theories abound and soon target dominion. As election conspiracies and false claims of fraud began to emerge in the days following the election, Fox knew the truth. Fox chief political correspondent Brett Baer stated previously on November 5th, quote, there is no evidence of fraud, none. On November 5th, Maria Bartiroma posted unfounded allegations of vote, quote, dumps on social media. Baer alerted Salmon, quote, we have to prevent this stuff. We need to fact check and separately told Fox president Jay Wallace. By November 6th, Rupert Murdoch told Suzanne Scott, quote, very hard to credibly claim foul everywhere. He also wrote, quote, if Trump becomes a sore loser, we should watch Sean especially and don't sound the same. Scott then forwarded that email to Mead Cooper, the executive vice president of primetime programming in charge of Hannity, Carlson and Pirro, among others. Cooper agreed. Indeed, Cooper testified that as of November 6th, going on, quote, going Going on television to say that the election was being stolen would not be based on fact at that point. On November 6th, Sidney Powell appeared on Lou Dobbs tonight and told viewers about an implausible conspiracy theory not yet tied to Dominion involving a secret CIA program called Hammer and Scorecard, Hammer being a government support supercomputer and scorecard a software program run on that computer to change votes. That quote explains a lot of what we are seeing. Immediately after this appearance, Brett Baer received an email about Hammer and Scorecard from a viewer, quote, Sidney Powell just broke the story on Dobbs. Baer immediately asked Fox President Jay Wallace, what is this? Oh, man. Not just as nearly just as immediate as election fraud claims were the public statements from credible sources debunking those claims. On November 6th alone, Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson publicly stated that an issue that occurred in Antrim County was the result of human error. And then it goes on to say on November 7th, the New York Post controlled by Murdoch family wrote an editorial asking Trump to quote, stop the stolen election rhetoric and get Rudy Giuliani off TV. Scott, the CEO of Fox, made sure that the editorial received wide distribution. Murdoch thanked her for 
doing so during the November 4th to November 7th timeframe. Fox made at least some effort to prevent charges from spreading. On November 6th, after Cooper received the forwarded email from Rupert Murdoch stating it was, quote, very hard to credibly cry foul and warning of Trump becoming a sore loser, Cooper and Fox executive Ron Mitchell discussed whether their primetime hosts, Hannity, Carlson, and Ingram, would push false claims of election fraud. I feel really good about Tucker and Laura. I think Sean will see the wisdom of this track eventually. But even this morning, he was still looking for examples of fraud. The same day, Cooper and executive David Clark canceled Janine Pirro's November 7th show. Clark told Cooper, quote, her guests are all going to say the election is being stolen. And if she pushes back at all, it will just be token. As Fox producer Justin Wells described, quote, they took her off because she was being crazy. Optics are bad, but she is crazy. Section E, Fox calls the election for Biden and mainstreams the false narrative that Dominion rigged the election. On November 7th, Fox called the 2020 presidential election for Biden, this time carefully waiting until other networks went first. The viewer backlash that Fox executives had hoped would fade, however, only became worse. Rupert Murdoch to Susan Scott getting creamed by CNN. Guess our viewers don't want to watch it. And reality began to set in. Fox Senior Vice President for Corporate Communication, Irina Brignati, wrote on the evening of November 17th, our viewers left this week after Arizona. Carlson also texted his producer, quote, do the executives understand how much credibility and trust we've lost with our audience? We're playing with fire for real. An alternative like Newsmax could be devastating to us. Enter Maria Bartiroma. On Sunday, November 8th, Bartiroma hosted Sidney Powell on Sunday Morning Futures, where Powell claimed that Dominion Software had an algorithm used as part of a, quote, massive and coordinated effort to steal this election from Trump. Bartiroma told Powell, quote, I know there were voting irregularities. Tell me about it. Bartiroma knew Powell would respond with conspiracy theories about Dominion. On November 7th, Bartiroma had interviewed Powell. Everyone is excluding me from meetings. What was the evidence for these far-fetched claims that Powell sent to Bartiroma the day before the broadcast? An email entitled, quote, election fraud info Powell had received from a source, which the author herself describes as pretty wackadoodle. This email also received by Dobbs alleged Dominion was one of the common thread of voting irregularities in a number of states. In addition to promoting lies about a Dominion, the sender claimed that Justice Scalia was purposefully killed at the annual Bohemian Grove camp during a week-long human hunting expedition and that former Fox News CEO Roger Ailes, who died in 2017, and Rupert Murdoch secretly huddle most days to determine how best to portray Mr. Trump as badly as possible. The author continued, who am I and how do I know all of this? I've had the strangest dream since I was a little girl. I was internally decapitated and yet I live. The wind tells me I'm a ghost, but I don't believe it. The full force of the email's lunacy comes across reading in its entirety. That's the source, folks, that Bartiroma cited um, or that Bartiroma was using to perpetuate election claims of election fraud on Fox. Bartiroma agreed at her deposition that this email was nonsense and inherently unreliable, yet Bartiroma and Dobbs never reported on the existence of the emails nor told her viewers about it. Then Fox continues to woo back viewers and goes on, quote, war footing against Newsmax. So on November 9th, the impact of Fox's Arizona call became more evidence to Fox executives. Carlson told Scott directly, quote, I've never seen a reaction like this to any media company. Kills me to watch it. Scott immediately relayed an email to Lachlan Murdoch. She told Briganti that Salmon did not understand the impact to the 
the brand and the arrogance in calling Arizona, which she found, quote, astonishing, given that as a top executive, it was Salmon's job to protect the brand. And on that day, day one, as Scott termed it, Fox executives made an explicit decision to push narratives to entice their audience back. Let me repeat that. The CEO of Fox said on this day, they made up a plan. Let's lie to the public because we need our viewers back. So Scott and Lachlan Murdoch exchanged text about the plan going forward. Scott, quote, viewers going through the five stages of grief. It's a question of trust. The Arizona call was damaging, but we will highlight our stars and plant flags, letting the viewers know we hear them and we respect them. And then Murdoch responds, yes, but needs constant rebuilding without any missteps. Scott, the CEO of Fox, writes, yes, today is the day one, and it's a process. Wallace likewise knew viewers were upset about the Arizona call and discussed it with Scott. Fox executives also began to criticize Fox hosts for truthful reporting. For example, on November 9th, Fox anchor Neil Cavuto cut away from a White House press conference when press secretary Kelly McEnany began making unsubstantiated allegations about election frauds. As Cavuto told viewers, whoa, 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 she's charging the other side as welcoming fraud and illegal voting. Unless she has more details to back that up, I can't in good countenance continue to show you this. And that's an explosive charge. The brand team led by Raj Shah at Fox Corporation notified senior Fox News and Fox Corporation leadership of the brand threat posed by Cavuto's actions. Think about that, folks. Fox executives also observed with concern the rise of Newsmax, a far-right network attempting to capitalize on viewer dissatisfaction with Fox. And prior to November 8th, Fox executive Dave Clark testified that Newsmax was not a credible media outlet because their hosts were extremely one-sided, ignored the facts. They did not seem to care about telling the truth. They seemed to invest truly in conspiracy theories versus fact. On November 10th, Scott pointed senior Fox executives to a note from analyst Kyle Goodwin on Newsmax's rise. Fox executive Porter Berry responded, quote, just pulled up Newsmax show and they're hitting Cavuto. They're just whacking us smart on their part. Lauren Peterson added, quote, they definitely have a strategy across all shows to try to target and steal our viewers. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on Newsmax. Think about that, folks, that they are getting jealous that Newsmax conspiracy theories are trying to actually steal their viewers. Hannity told Carlson and Ingram on November 12th, quote, in one week and one debate, they destroyed a brand that took 25 years to build and the damage is incalculable, Tucker responded. It's vandalism. The host also discussed the possibility of competition to Fox emerging. Hannity told them, quote, serious money with serious distribution could become a real problem. In my humble opinion, they need to address what the fuck do I know? Tucker Carlson responded, that could happen. Happen. Now, this next section, G, this Dominion shit is going to give me a fucking aneurysm. By November 12th, Dominion became a focal point of discussion within multiple shows of Fox. That day, Ingraham's producer, Tommy Firth, texted Ron Mitchell, one of the Fox executives responsible for overseeing Ingraham's show. Firth bluntly captured the dilemma, quote, the dilemma, quote, the Dominion shit is going to give me a fucking aneurysm as many times as I've told Laura it's BS. She sees shit posters and Trump tweeting about it. Mitchell responds, quote, this is the Bill Gates microchip angle to voter fraud. Firth replied later in the day, Ron checks in. How's it going with the kooks? Lou Dobbs chose a different strategy. That night, November 12th, he invited Rudy Giuliani on a show. When Giuliani spewed lies about Dominion, Dobbs responded, quote, it's stunning. They have no ability to audit meaningfully the votes that are cast because the servers are somewhere else. This looks to me like it is the end of what has been for four and a half, the end game of four and a half year long effort to overthrow the president of the United States. Dobbs continued to broadcast these false charges throughout the week and for nearly a month until December uh, 10th.
Meanwhile, later that night, November 12th, Ingraham was still texting with Hannity and Carlson. In their group text thread, Carlson pointed Hannity to a tweet by Fox reporter Jackie Heinrich. Heinrich was, quote, fact-checking a tweet by Trump that mentioned Dominion and specifically mentioned Hannity and Dobbs broadcast that evening discussing Dominion. Heinrich correctly fact-checked the tweet pointing out that, quote, top election infrastructure officials said that, quote, there is no evidence that any voting system deleted or lost votes, changed votes, or was in any way compromised. Carlson told Haddon, quote, please get her fired. Seriously, what the fuck? I'm actually shocked. It needs to stop immediately like tonight. It's measurably hurting the company. The stock price is going down. Not a joke, Tucker added. I just went crazy on Mead over it. Haddon said he had already sent Suzanne with a really. He then added, I'm three strikes. Wallace shit debate, election night disaster. Now this BS, not gonna fly. Did I mention Cavuto? So, folks, they're flipping out on all the people who are trying to tell the truth. Hannity indeed had discussed with Scott. Hannity texted his team, quote, I just dropped a bomb. Suzanne Scott received the message. She told Jay Wallace and Fox News Senior Vice President for Corporate Communication, Irina Briganti, quote, Sean texted me. He's standing down and responding, but not happy about this and doesn't understand how this is allowed to happen from anyone in news. Heinrich has serious nerve doing this. And if this gets picked up, viewers are going to be further disgusted. By next morning, Heinrich had deleted her fact-checking tweet. Think about that. The pressure on Fox grows, even as Dominion puts Fox on notice. Also beginning November 12, 2020, Dominion sent Fox a setting the record straight email providing the facts about Dominion and links to public information. Uh, then it goes on to say Fox's corporate representative, Tom Lowell, testified that in the few months following the election, Various Fox addresses received over 3,600 such communications from Dominion correcting false allegations and also were circulated widely within Fox. Indeed, executive David Clark received Dominion's fact check so many times that on November 14th, he wrote a colleague, I have tattooed it on my body at this time. Point. It goes on to then discuss Fox also had its own internal fact checking department, the brain room that could and did investigate the truth about Dominion. The brain room is the centralized research department at Fox News. Meanwhile, Fox continued to broadcast its lies about Dominion as it nervously eyed Newsmax. In November 16th, in an email, Rupert Murdoch told Scott to read a Wall Street Journal piece about Newsmax, telling her, quote, these people should be watched if skeptically. Trump will concede eventually, and we should concentrate on Georgia, helping any way we can. We don't want to antagonize Trump further, but Giuliani taken with a large grain of salt. Everything at stake here. I mean, just think about this. This is Fox saying that they need to help the Republicans win Georgia and to basically continue to suck up to Donald Trump. Carlson told his producer, Alex Pfeiffer, that night, Sidney Powell is lying, effing bitch, he writes. By November 18th, Carlson told Ingraham, Sidney Powell is lying, by the way. I caught her. It's insane. Ingraham responded, Sidney is a complete nut. No one will work with her. Ditto with Rudy, Carlson replied. It's unbelievably offensive to me. Our viewers are good people and they believe it. Also, on November 18th, Senior Vice President of Primetime Programming, and analytics, Ron Mitchell sent a memo to Scott and Wallace stating with respect to Newsmax, the lack of any meaning editorial guidance may be a positive for them, at least in the short term. For example, last night on Stitchfield, who at 8 p.m., the show sourced websites like Gateway Pundit while talking about voter fraud. The type of conspiratorial reporting might be exactly what the disgruntled Fox News Channel viewer is looking for. Mitchell concluded that, quote, viewers are watching less Fox News and suggested fixes. Do not ever give viewers a reason to turn us off. Every topic and guest must perform. 
and no unforced errors in content example, abruptly turning away from a Trump campaign press conference. On November 19th, Fox broadcast the entirety of a, quote, crazy press conference where Giuliani and Powell spewed lies about Dominion. And this is a Rupert Murdoch email subject watching Giuliani and text really crazy stuff and damaging. But while Fox did not cut away this time, then White House correspondent Kristen Fisher did fact check the claims made by Powell and Giuliani. Fox executives were not pleased. Fisher received a call from her boss, Brian Boughton, immediately after, in which he, quote, emphasized that the higher ups at Fox News were also unhappy with it and that Fisher needed to do a better job. This is a quote, respecting our audience. Fox anchor Dana Perino noted that the claims at the press conference could be enough to prompt Dominion to sue. This comment resulted in Scott screaming about Dana's show and their reaction to the Rudy Presser. Scott explained in an email regarding both Perino and Fisher's coverage, you can't give the crazies an inch right now. They are looking for and blowing up all appearances of disrespect to the audience. Scott separately noted, the audience feels like we crapped on them and we have damaged their trust and belief in us. We can fix this, but we cannot smirk at our viewers any longer. Fox executive Ron Mitchell commented, quote, I'm not mad at either of them. I'm mad at these clowns at the conference who put us in a terrible place. That afternoon, Mitchell asked Firth, quote, will you be mentioning the international crime conspiracy to steal the election featuring Soros, Maduro, Chavez, Antifa, Cuba, and China? Firth responded, haha, no, basically want to wrangle the argument away from the crazy that was today. It's easy to dismiss legitimate complaints when you can lump them in with the circus. Mitchell responded, yes, but those clowns put us in an awkward place where we're going to need to thread the needle. Quote, I mean, if they can't take the time to do the press, this will die faster. Dobbs continued airing these defamatory statements, hosting Powell and Giuliani throughout this time frame. Then it goes on Dominion General Counsel sent more of these letters and then Fox continued to participate in the narrative. Um, but you see here, um, again, privately, Fox's hosts and executives knew that Donald Trump lost the election, that he needed to concede, but Fox viewers heard a different story repeatedly. On January 5th, Rupert Murdoch told Suzanne Scott, quote, it's been suggested our primetime three should independently or together say something like, quote, the election is over and Joe Biden won. And that such statement, quote, would go a long way to stop the Trump myth that the election was stolen. Scott forwarded the email to Cooper stating, I told Rupert that privately they are all there. We need to be careful about using the shows and pissing off the viewers, but they know how to navigate. Despite internal recognition that the election was over, Fox did not retract its claims about Dominion. Instead, it kept defaming Dominion. To this day, Fox has never retracted the false statements it broadcast about Dominion. Wow. So I know that took about 35 minutes to read all of that. I hope you were able to stay with it, but I think it was important to get all of the text messages that are in this message in this motion. All of the emails that are in this motion, all of the deposition testimony that's in this motion. Now the standard that Dominion needs to show is actual malice that Fox knew or acted with a uh, reckless disregard for the truth. It's very rare to get granted summary judgment when you are the plaintiff, when you are the moving party. But here, when you see the undisputed statements by these Fox reporters and executives, I think Dominion has a shot. Fox's defense, though, is, oh, First Amendment, we were just putting another perspective out there. But the messages show that they knew they were putting lies out there consistently because they were afraid of Newsmax and they were afraid of losing viewership. So they wanted to destroy and still to this day are destroying our democracy, these phony traitors. But they are exposed in these text messages. I can't wait for this trial. I can't wait for this trial in April where Fox employees, reporters, Rupert Murdoch will take the stand and testify publicly 
on all of this stuff. And I hope Dominion doesn't settle. I hope Dominion takes them to trial. And I certainly hope for the sake of our democracy, Dominion prevails. It's just so important to read you all of those messages that I know that may have taken a long time, but I think it was critical to go over it. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit the subscribe button. We are on our way to 1 million subscribers thanks to your support. Please hit the subscribe button now. In addition to hitting subscribe, check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Midas Touch. You'll love the exclusive content we have on Midas Touch. Patreon, but most importantly, it helps grow this independent media platform. Again, hit subscribe right now. It's free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Have a great day. Love this video? Then you'll love the Midas Touch podcast. Listen as my brothers and I break down the latest news and chat with top political leaders on the fastest growing pro-democracy podcast in the world. New episodes drop every Tuesday and Friday. Add the Midas Touch podcast right now wherever you listen to your podcasts.